Hey everybody, how's it going? It's AJ here with Dirt Tracks and uh, we're bringing you some new product. This is a brand new 2021 Commander XT 1000 and it looks a little different around here. It looks a little different for Dirt Tracks, uh, middle of winter and uh, we're still shooting snow tracks, but what do you do? You got brand new product on the ground, you got to do a walk around of it, right? So I want to give you guys a bit of an overview. <clears throat> the Commander has completely changed top to bottom. Not a single thing about it that's the same, maybe except for the, the 1000 motor. Um, so. Commander for 2021 comes in a whole bunch of different packages. You've probably already seen that on their website, but you can get it in two-seater, four-seater, DPS, XT, and then also the premium XTP version. This is the XT package. It does have a couple of accessories, so ignore those. The two fog lights up front, it's got a rack on the back, and then it also has a bed extender on it. Those are accessories, but this front bumper comes factory on it. You can only get the new Commander with a 1,000cc, uh, 1,000R Rotax motor. That's all that comes standard. Uh, which is totally fine. It does have drive modes, so you can change in between those, which is pretty cool. And it does have the DESS uh, encoded security key on it. Um, <clears throat> let's start at the front. XT gets you the cool um, kind of signature uh, lights up front. It also gets you, um, well, or sorry, which are LEDs. So that's kind of a nice feature. That's an upgrade over DPS. One of the things up front on the XT, obviously, is the huge front bumper. This looks like an accessory bumper. It isn't. It's got lots of room for extra lights on it. You can use tube, fl uh, tube clamps from aftermarket uh, accessory manufacturers to get extra lights on there or light bars or whatever you want, but it does have two built-in mounts for lights as well. Now, it goes up and in behind the front fenders. It's super beefy, super strong. Um, it's a really nice front rack. It's way better than any other rack, I think, on any other side-by-side -side right now. So that's really, that's really nice that they put that from the factory. Down at the bottom is your 4,500 pound winch. And XT has always been known for having bumpers and winches. That's pretty much been the hallmark of the XT package, uh, as well as some bigger tires typically, which this one does have. We'll touch on that in just a little bit. But it does have a 4,500 pound winch, uh, standard on the XT package. Remote is obviously inside the cab, super cool. Something that I wanna to talk to you about quickly. When you're running side by sides, you're getting dirty, you're getting you know mud stuck everywhere. Mud always gets stuck in the rad. And side-by-sides are pretty well known for having overheating issues if you really get into the deep stuff. So Can-Am understands that, they know that, and one of the things they wanted to do from the factory to make it really easy to clean out is put two little removal tabs on this grill up here. And if there wasn't accessory headlights in, we could just pop this thing out and go ahead and clean it out. So that's kind of nice. You can get right in there. You can clean out all the fins of the rad. And yeah, Bob's your uncle. Maybe he isn't. Uh, anyways, that's a pretty cool feature. I like that. That's smart. It's simple. It's easy. It's not hard to get to. And cleaning out a radiator is really important. Let's move around a little bit. <coughs> Sorry, this windshield is not factory either. That's one of the accessories on here, but it does look pretty nice. Roof comes standard. That's really nice. We like roofs on all side-by-sides, and I'm glad that Can-Am decided to put that on this XT package. Down to the tires. So Can-Am for a while has been using different tire brands. Um, whether it be Maxxis or whoever, they've uh, made a bit of a change here. So this tire is really nice looking. It's 28 inches tall. Uh, that's, that's what comes on this uh, XT standard. Is no longer branded with a brand that you would recognize. This is called XPS and it's, it's called the Trail, Trail King, right? Yeah, sorry, I'm getting used to these names because I'm not, uh, not familiar with XPS. But XPS, if you'll notice up here on the tire, is the same brand as uh, can-am skidoo Sea-Doo, all of those brands oil company so this is their lubricants and oil is xps and you are now going to be able to get xps tires in fact i'm pretty certain that all can-am vehicles are going to switch over to have xps tires moving forwards and you're going to be able to buy them from your dealer as well should you want to replace them um, or put a set of xps tires on your own buggy so that's kind of cool uh, while we're down here tech specs this vehicle looks strangely familiar underneath. It looks a whole lot like a Maverick Trail, Maverick Sport in that range. It's 64 inches wide. I'm pretty certain when you go down to the DPS, you lose two inches up front. Uh, you get a little bit, or sorry, XTP is slightly wider, I believe. Uh, uh, maybe maybe the XT packages as well. I'll have to verify this for you and we'll put it in the, in the comments section below. Um, but width does increase as you go up through the packages just slightly, but this one is 64 inches wide. However, the front suspension looks exactly like a Maverick Trail. Very, very similar, uh, or Maverick Sport, whatever you want. I mean, they're kind of the same, just with a little bit of slight differences. The frame up front looks very similar to that as well. And a lot of the componentry and things on this vehicle look like a Maverick Trail, Maverick Sport. That's, the, uh, you know, the doors on the side, I'm about 90% certain are off of a Maverick Sport. So these are not your cheap doors. These are the premium ones with the, uh, the plastic liner on the inside. Um, 
much nicer than just the standard Maverick trail doors, but that's what's coming on this XT package, which is really nice. So if you look at Polaris General, they come with full doors. And I think that this is just matching that, which is nice because you don't want to go to your Can-Am dealer and feel like you're getting something less than your buddy who went to his Polaris dealer. So that's really nice. And these doors are super premium. They feel great and they give you all the coverage that you need. Plus they have a wicked door seal on them. The rubber door seal on this thing is like really, really automotive quality. And when it closes, it's like, it's, it's not rattly. It's not shaky, feels good. And it actually keeps a little bit of water out, uh, which I have had water up past the doors on the Maverick Trail and Maverick Sport. Back to suspension. This rig has 15 inches of suspension all the way around. Um, so that's, that's pretty stout. That's a very, very good suspension number. Nothing shy there, nothing, uh, nothing to be concerned about. Great suspension, 13 inches of ground clearance. Um, those numbers are, are pretty tall. I think uh, the only thing that really beats that is the R-Max just in the rear. In the front, the R-Max has slightly less, but in the rear, the R-Max has a couple of inches more. So um, really, really respectable numbers on suspension travel here. 100 horsepower out of the 1000R, I forgot to mention that earlier. So nothing beefed up when it comes to performance on the engine, just that standard, uh, really strong, really reliable 1000cc, um, 100 horsepower Rotax 1000. Let's move around a little bit uh, into the cab. You, you'll notice some of the stuff over here, the, you know, like this frog skin type material over the intakes, exactly the same as the Maverick Trail. So you're gonna see a lot of stuff that looks very similar. Even the, uh, um, the profile on the cab so that you can put full doors and windshields and all the extra stuff on. Can-Am's making this so that all the accessories really fit in nice and seamlessly, doing a great job with that. Let's fire it up because I know everybody always wants to hear how these things sound, so I don't want to forget about doing that. And we can talk a little bit about the interior while I'm inside. It's nice and quiet. It's not overly loud in the cab. There is a sound dampening material between the engine and me sitting in the cab. So that's kind of cool. And it actually, it, it makes it quite a bit quieter than, than some other vehicles that I've, that I've sat in and driven, um, which is nice. It's, it's not, not loud. I could have a conversation with somebody sitting beside me, even if we had our helmets on, we don't have to yell to each other. So that's, I think that's kind of a nice feature. It, uh, it sounds like the 1000R always sounds clean, strong, reliable. On the interior, I feel like I'm in a Maverick Trail because, or a Maverick Sport rather, with the wider arms, because it's exactly the same layout. Center console is the same, uh, dash is the same. The only thing that looks a little bit different is the surround for this upper gauge cluster. It looks just slightly different, uh, but maybe that's a running change for the new Maverick Sport and Trail as well. But uh, comes with the big gauge, nice uh, seven, <coughs> seven inch-ish um, gauge up here. It's got the control panel on the dash, so you can go through your trip menu and drive modes. Um, it's got diff lock, and your four wheel drive select. This is an accessory light switch. Over on the left side over here, I have my winch and I have my regular headlights. DESS tether. And truthfully, the inside, I'm, I'm pretty certain is exactly the same as the trail and sport. It's got your cup holders down on the floor, lots of leg room. Um, the seats feel much like the trail and sport as well. So super comfortable. I've loved the trail and the sport. There's nothing wrong with either of those. I, I actually find them to be some of the most comfortable sport um, side-by-sides in the business, so why wouldn't they use the same on the interior? It's perfect. Still got the big glove box here. Um, you can fit all kinds of stuff in there if you need to. And then, uh, you know, it, on this side has just the Wii glove box, which is kind of good for an extra pair of goggles or sunglasses or your wallet. But uh, yeah, it does have obviously DPS. It's got power steering. What doesn't nowadays? Everything's got power steering. Tilt steering wheel. You got lots of room for tilt getting in and out and your seat is fully adjustable. So that's handy. Out back, like I said before, this rack is not stock and this bed extender is not stock, but we can still talk about them. This has like gear grips on the back of here so you can put, you know, shovels sideways through here and strap them on, do whatever you need to do. It does have link accessory holders on here. And then around the top of the box, you've also got your link accessories, um, your accessory mounts, so you can do anything with link. The box itself, uh, Can-Am claims to be the largest box capacity in the entire category of kind of rec sport uh, side-by-sides and it looks like it, it's super deep. It's got great dividers here for putting your, uh, like your two by four or two by 10 or two by 12, whatever you want for height and depth, dividers in the box, they'll slide right in here. You just measure up, cut and, uh, and slam those in and you got a divider inside your box. That's really handy. I like that a lot, smart system, uh, good design. Now, 
it, it's very tall. It has uh, strut assist tilt, so we can, you know, we can tilt the bed of the uh, the side by side. That's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You got lots of access to everything in the back that you need to get access to. Um, nothing, nothing really special there. So that's all good. Now, the side of the box, there is storage underneath this side panel, which is a super smart thing for Can-Am to do because. Really, the side of the box has absolutely no purpose besides holding everything in the back of the box. And they thought, why not make that a storage compartment? I'm going to show you exactly how you do that. Firstly, it's got a nice, like, probably, no, not probably, best in the industry handle and feel of a rear box. Like, this thing feels like a pickup truck. It's, it's, not, it's not chintzy feeling. This is a really good feeling handle. And it doesn't have a uh, tailgate assist like my Chevy does, but that's okay. We won't, uh, we won't get too too techy on that stuff right now. Um, the tailgate will take up, I believe it's 200 pounds, so you can probably push that a little bit. Um, it, it, what they're saying is that you can sit on the back of this tailgate, so a 250 pound guy can climb up into the box, no problem, it's gonna be fine. This is a bed extender. I'm just gonna show it to you because I think it's really cool, and then I'll talk about the storage in the side. Just like a pickup truck, my, my Chevy has this in the back. It folds up and clips in on the side here through these little kind of locking fasteners, clips in, and it gives you an extra, I don't know, probably 14, 16 inches of, uh, of space back here. I apologize, the tailgate is 250 pounds. Sorry, it's not 200, it's 250. So if you're 251 pounds, don't climb in the back. Just kidding. Um, this bed extender is an accessory, but it's a really cool option, and it gives you a whole bunch of extra space back here. I haven't tested it yet um, to see how it is for staying put, but one of the nice things is it has these little rubber kind of uh, security guides here. So you snap these things in on both sides and it's not gonna rattle out and shake off when you're going down the trail. I think it's a cool feature. I like it um, and I think it's smart. They're the first people to do this. It extends your bed and gives you a huge usable area. And then when you wanna go back down to regular, it's just a lift, drop back down, do a couple little rubber snaps. And it really doesn't impede on anything that you would be doing. And when you lift this back up, it doesn't really take up any space. So. Good on you, Can-Am, you guys did a great job here. When it comes to the D-rings in the box, these are beefy, they're strong, and they don't look like if I put a ratchet strap on them, they're just gonna bend and buckle and pull out. And you all know what I mean by that because most of the D-rings in boxes are complete junk. These aren't, they have a nice like solid steel base to them. It looks like it's probably a complete welded D-ring instead of being those ones that are, you know, not completely connected together in the bottom. There's four of them in the box here and they've got a nice Torx bit on them and a bolt through the bottom through the steel frame. So you can crank on those suckers and keep whatever you need to keep in in the box of the uh, the side by side. Let's talk about that side box because this is it's kind of unique. It's almost it's almost like uh, when Dodge came out with that uh, that Ram box I think it was called on the side of theirs. It's it's just an extra place that people weren't really doing much. There's two little Zeus fasteners back here. Um, you just remove those simple as that. This won't come off without the box tailgate down. You grab it, slide back, and pull directly out. And that gives you access to a spare belt as well as a CVT tool can snap in there. And I guess if you wanted to, you could probably put some other things in there if you want. If you don't want to put your belt in there, well, I don't know. You could fill it up with granola bars or Gatorade or dirt, whatever you think you want to put in there. Um, it's just it's just an extra spot to put stuff but i like the fact that the belt is somewhere not jammed under your seat you know where it's going to get wet and and you know when you're sliding the seat around it's going to get you know rubbed up against or whatever it's not sitting in the box of the thing and can come flying out or you don't have it zip tied to the you know the roof or something where are you going to put a belt there's not always a great place to put it so this is perfect makes all the sense in the world to me i have never blown a belt on a Can-Am product. And I have run the bags off a lot of Can-Ams, including turbos, and I haven't toasted a belt yet. So if you put a belt in here, yeah, you're probably never ever gonna need one, but it's nice to have one with you just in case something were to go wrong. So, and usually it's user, user error, not, uh, not Can-Am belt error or Can-Am vehicle error. So this thing comes back over. Gotta make sure this snaps over the end. And then it sits in here like so goes forwards, pretty straight forwards. This is the second time I've ever done this. So if I can figure that out that quick, you're gonna be just fine. You put the Zeus fasteners back in, close the tailgate, which feels like a flipping pickup truck tailgate. That thing is strong. It's like, yeah, it's got something to it. Out back, 15 inches of travel. Now, one thing to notice, this does have arched A-arms on it. If you go to the regular DPS package, it's not arched. Um, 
So that's something to think about. If you go to the XTP package, I'm pretty sure it's XTP is their highest level package. Uh, the XTP has Fox QS3 shocks on it. So you get a nice suspension upgrade there. You also get a beadlock wheel. Um, and I'm not 100% certain on the specs for the tires on the DPS. This is the XT, that's what we're talking about. One thing you will notice, a lot of times XT used to come with a rear bumper of some kind. This one doesn't, but you don't need it. It's got a nice, nice shape to the back of it. Two inch hitch receiver. I mean, this is all standard stuff on, on big side-by-sides right now. This is looking directly at the General and the R-Max as its competition. And I think it does a great job fitting right in there with those. It's coming just like Polaris, one motor option, 1000 cc only. Um, great suspension travel at 15 inches all around. Great clearance at 13 inches. Uh, comes with factory doors and a roof. Comes with a winch on it. The interior is super comfortable. You can get it in a two or a four seat, which that's that's pretty pretty nice. And it's a it's a true four seat, so that's a differentiator between the Yamaha R Max four and um, the the Polaris Ring or Polaris General and this Commander. Um, the Commander and the General are both true four seaters, where you don't have to convert anything in the back of a back of a box. It still has a tilting box on the four seater, so. Some nice options there. It's gonna give you guys a lot of choices when you go into the dealership. And let me tell you, the old Commander had seen its day. It was great when it first came out, but it got a little long on the tooth over time. And it just, you know, it was an old tech vehicle. It was still selling. That's great, but this is exactly what they needed to do. They morphed this thing into, uh, you know, a modern, really usable, stylish, super, super well-performing vehicle. It's got uh, 2,000 pound towing capacity. It's got a massive box for storing all the stuff that you could ever want to store. Has all those little cool creature comforts too, like those bed dividers I was talking about. Just smart little things, the, you know, the front rad clean out. Small stuff that a lot of times we don't think about. The side box, you know, to store the belt. Stuff that when you go to the dealership, you, if it wasn't there, you may not think about it. But when you go in and look at it, you go, oh, that's really thought, like that's smart. That makes a lot of sense. I like that, I'm gonna use that. You know, why not? We're paying enough for these things nowadays. They should come with all these cool little features. And I'm glad that Can-Am's up the game and really bumped up their quality level, bumped up their functionality and the usability of this vehicle. Besides that, there's a whole ton of accessories for this vehicle and all of the Link products work on it. But just like Can-Am always does, they haven't come to the party with one or two accessories. They've got dozens and dozens of accessories. So if you want to accessorize the, you know, the bags off this thing, go for it because you can. Your dealer's going to have all of it. These are going to be dropping at dealers any time now. I asked a very pointed question to Can-Am and said, is there going to be any issues because of COVID getting these things delivered to dealers? And they said there's no problems. So these are going to be showing up right away. You're going to be able to get one if you want one and get out on the trails. So I'm excited for you guys to, uh, to give the new commander a test. We're going to take it out and try to put some miles on it. However, it's uh, still pretty frigid here and there's no trails opened up. So we're going to see where we can go on some private trails and uh, have a little bit of fun. Look for that video hopefully coming up on uh, dirt tracks in the near future. But we'll be back to, uh, to dirt and mud and, and regular dirt tracks very soon. But we wanted to bring you this as soon as we had it. So 2021 Can-Am Commander XT1000R. Hope you guys like it. We do. We'll see if we can uh, get another one for a test in the summer and give it a bit of a beating.